two, one. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to uh, Delusions of Grandeur. I am one of your ho uh, hosts, uh, but today in the room I have Boris in the room, and uh, uh, apparently he has chosen to be our host today. But uh, before we get started, uh, let me just uh, tell you that we have been going on lately about films that have a devilish nature about them. So, so um, uh, and uh, we already, The Omen, uh, and The Omen 2, uh, but today we're doing what film, Boris? Uh, today we are doing uh, one of my personal favorite parts of the Omen series, which is Omen 3, The Final Conflict, uh, which I, as you can see, have on... Oh, nice, you have a different edition. I have this one, which is a part of an Omen box set. Oh! Oh, uh, is that uh, DVD you showed a moment and, ago? And you know what? The, of... There are like tons of these box sets out there. There's an old. There's a. There's an. Yeah, it's a part of this uh, uh, set, and although it's called uh, uh, called the final uh, conflict, it says uh, Woman Three on the uh, on the side of it. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, let's see what IMDb says about uh, this movie. Uh, the movie was directed by, shame on me, I should have known this by now, Graham Baker. I hope I pronounced the name correctly. Mm -hmm. And, Graham uh, Baker. Graham, yeah, yeah. And uh, an interesting fact about it is that there is also a novelization written by a man named Gordon McGill, who also, also wrote... Uh, yeah. And uh, he also wrote uh, two extra novels, uh, his own sequels to the story, which... Uh, uh, which... Uh, do not exist in the movie version, which are Omen 4, Armageddon 2000, and Omen 5, The Abomination. But, okay, I will get more into those uh, once we get to Omen 4. So, uh, for now, let's see what... Uh, uh, what synopsis IMDb has for this movie? Uh, now because we never know to... exactly what they'll give for us. Sometimes they're so vague, it's not even funny. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm sorry, I think uh, our audience got out, got a bit uh, out, of out of sync. Uh, we are having some glitches. I think your internet connection might... Uh, okay. <laughs> Not a problem. Um, basically, I sa as, as said that sometimes IMDb is sometimes so vague that uh, that uh, it's not even possible to understand what's going on in the film. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, yeah. Uh, okay, let's see what it does say, though. Now coming to his full knowledge and power, the Antichrist in the body of Davian Thorn is about to strike his final blow. The Christ child has been born again on the Angel Isle, Great Britain, Scotland, England and Wales. The plan is simple, kill the Christ child to prevent him from growing up to bring the return of Christ and death of the Antichrist. So, <laughs> Dave, <laughs> what are uh, yes. you, what were your first impressions of this movie? Is this your first time watching it, or 
Can you see it before? I have seen this film at least once before. Um, me and my fiance, we ended up watching it some years back um, when we both got our sets. And I had a trilogy set, and then I found a copy of the fourth film by itself. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> as our glitch goes through, I think uh, the Antichrist is trying to stop us from um, even talking about. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of seems but, so, yeah. <laughs> um, Boris, can you hear me? Uh, more or less, yeah. Your video is. Oh, no, I can't hear you anymore. Well, ladies and gentlemen, looks like Dave uh, got lost for a moment, but I hope he will be back soon. Oh, yep. hello. Hey, so I'm not sure if any of y'all heard me. Um, I watched this film um, once upon a time uh, in a marathon of sorts with my fiance. And uh, it's been some time, so uh, seeing this uh, film ag again is kind of cool to see through my adult eyes now. Um, although I was an adult then, um, I, it, um, it's very intriguing because Sam Neill is definitely very young in here. Um, he's still got a boyish charm to him, so <laughs> it's... Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's interesting that later on he would play a good guy um, a, a, as Alan Grant in uh, Jurassic Park. And also he pl played a bad guy German in The Hunt for a, a, a Red October. So, uh, so um, it's definitely an interesting role for, uh, for him, seeing him so compliant for his dearly beloved uh underworld father <laughs> yeah. um, but there are definitely some scenes in here that uh, that, uh, that um uh, definitely uh i guess at the time as uh, uh, Hello, Dave. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Oh, looks like Dave is having uh, some glitches again. <laughs> Not sure actually who would be the one trying to prevent this conversation from happening if we attributed it to any otherworldly forces. <laughs> Uh, but uh, let's hope he returns soon. Or uh, are you maybe here? I'm not even sure what uh, you, if anyone is listening to us. Uh, oh, Dave is gone for now. But uh, hey, sorry uh, about that. <laughs> I, I guess I keep mean, having some glitches on my end. I don't know why, but, uh, but maybe um, you should uh, try I basically, to. Uh, yes. Um. Yeah. Let me try to. Give me one second, fo uh, folks. I know this is kind of a glitchy mo uh, uh, a yeah. moment. I'm gonna. And I think you should. Uh, I think you should try to reset your router. Well, give me a moment. Let's see if this works. Mm -hmm. So, basically, I enjoyed it. I mean, it it, it wasn't. Uh, it, it it was a good conclusion to the uh, to the trilogy. I think. Um, at the Ooh. time, uh, of course, we never knew that uh, uh, that there was going to be a fourth one uh, uh, until like it was made or what. Uh, what but I well, thought that it it was a very decent performance, Daniel. So, uh, 
Um, no, it's other fine. Than that, uh, uh, yes. Other than that, uh, what was your uh, first impression of this, uh, uh, Boris? Uh, what, was this a first time watch for you? No, it was not the first time. Today I saw it uh, twice, uh, once uh, by myself earlier, and now with you again. But uh, I have seen it uh, two or three times before, and I also read this uh, novelization of the movie. And uh, I uh, I really liked uh, this movie a lot. Uh, Sam Neill, definitely. Uh, performed his role fabulously. Uh, what uh, is really interesting about him is how he can uh, go all the way from uh, being charming, like around women, around uh, uh, journalists and so on, to being uh, rather intimidating and terrifying when he is dealing with his enemies or uh, having a speech in front of his disciples and so on. Speaking of which, uh, spoiler alert, ladies and gentlemen, we will be discussing this movie very thoroughly, so we will uh, we will spoil a lot of the plot, so if you haven't seen it, uh, maybe you should watch it first before listening to our discussion. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, now the first time I watched the movie, I must say I was somewhat disappointed by the ending, although the very title somewhat uh, hints how it's going to end. Although when I analyzed the story later, uh, uh, I figured out uh, the ending was decent after all, however, what you say that it's a good conclusion, good conclusion to a trilogy. Uh, I actually kind of felt that it uh, did need, uh, that it, uh, it did leave room for a sequel and kind of needed one too, because uh, there was something they said in the first movie about the uh, these seven daggers of Megiddo, which are said to be the only thing that can kill Damien. And uh, what they said in the first movie about the rules so of performing that killing was neglected in this one, which is why, in my opinion, it uh, makes sense for yet another sequel to be made. Uh, but uh, we will get into that later, probably. We should start from the beginning, right? Yeah, we should definitely start at the very beginning. Um, from what I understand, uh, it, uh, the film starts with um, where we are um, shown a political figure, right? Oh, it uh, starts actually slightly before that, but yeah, this is probably the first, uh, the first uh, more relevant scene. Yeah, this oh, is yeah. the first uh, one. That, uh, and it, it, it starts with the auction, doesn't it? Uh, 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 yeah, with the <laughs> seven daggers of Megiddo being extracted from the sword museum. Auctioned which, uh, off. Yeah, so the daggers were extracted from there after the uh, fire in the museum where everything was pretty much destroyed except for the daggers. And now they are on this auction where people don't really seem to know what it is until they get in the hands so of the church people. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and uh, this all is kind of going on in the background, from what I understand, as to as to end, while we uh, we um, find out that Damien Thorne is, um, I guess he is in some kind of power over his uh, over his company, and I guess they've come across some information from Egypt. Mm. Mm, 
yeah, well, he inherited the entirety of the Thorn wealth uh, since uh, his entire family got killed in the second movie so that he could inherit it all. <laughs> oh, yeah. So money is definitely power in here, um, uh, in this uh, film. Um, and uh, I guess because he kind of knows the pre uh, 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 pre uh, president, he's got some dude on hand uh, 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 that has a wife named Barbara that is pregnant with a child. Um, and we see that later on during a dinner party, right? Uh, yeah, that, uh, that guy, Harvey Dean, was played by, let me just find it on IMDb, uh, uh, I'm still kind of struggling with this new uh, IMDb layout. I am too. Uh, uh, IMDb, uh, you should be sh ashamed of yourself with the way that you <laughs> have. Uh, uh, so Harvey Dean is uh, played by Don yeah, Gordon. Don, yeah, just found it. Uh, his wife, Barbara, by... Oh my, how do we even pronounce this? Le Maybe Lee. Louin? Louin Will Willoughby. 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 Louin Willoughby. So. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I apologize for not knowing how to pronounce some names. It's because English is not my first language, as most of you probably know. So, apologies for that. <laughs> And I guess Louine Willoughby actually um, played in Superman and Superman 2, uh, Richard Donner's uh, 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 films as a second secretary and uh, uh, and in the 1980 uh, Superman 2 as Louine. So. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah. I guess uh, she hasn't really been in a whole, a, a whole lot. Uh, the last thing that she was in was in 1987, uh, Island Love Song. I don't know what that was, but in mm -hmm. any case. <laughs> I haven't seen that either. Um, moving onwards, what happens to this uh, political figure that plays the ambassador? Oh, he, in the usual omen fashion gets killed or uh, in a way commit suicide under the influence of otherworldly forces it's described much better in the book actually we get to see him having some sorts of hallucinations in the movie uh, we do see him stumble upon one of those rottweilers that uh, probably kind of hypnotize him into committing suicide like well, yeah. the, to the daddy in the first movie he ended up walking right past his chauffeur uh because uh, 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 his chauffeur opened up the do uh, uh, the door to his vehicle because evidently he'd gone there uh apparently uh, uh, Lee, and uh, he walked straight into his building and uh, right past the security guard. And all of these people were being like kind and courteous to uh, to him, and he was oblivious. And the only person he answered was his personal secretary. No calls. You know? Mm, yeah. <laughs> and we also saw this one scene in the mirror. I must say, the first time I saw it, I didn't understand it too much because we see his reflection in the mirror and like he gets terrified for whatever reason but we don't really get to see why and i think his reflection acts differently than him it's like he saw his reflection move when he wasn't moving or something oh. to that eff effect or at least i think that's what what was trying to be portrayed here so i think um he saw his uh, his reflection like 
do uh, uh, do some things that he wasn't doing. You know. Mm. Yeah, that might be it. I didn't notice that, but yeah, in the book we get to read pretty clearly that he was hallucinating just before his death. Well, regardless, he uh, in the movie he um, ties a gun to the door knobs, and he basically tells this whole mob of media uh, uh, people to come in, and basically by that opening up of the door, it basically blew his brains out. Mm, yeah, <laughs> and every sense of the word. I mean, uh, of course. Uh, you noticed that his eyes were still open or some shit like that. Uh, or uh, they yeah, opened like, and closed. In, in one sequence, just after he uh, got shot, I think his eyes were closed. And then in the next uh, in the next time his face appeared, his eyes were open. <laughs> I don't know if that was a mistake or maybe intentional since... Uh, and I'm not, sure, I'm not sure, but I thought I thought I saw his leg move after he was shot, uh, uh, shot, and he went backwards. All of a sudden, uh, his leg twitched, and it was like, "Why is your leg twitching when, when your brains have been blown to smithereens? You know, why why is your body still moving? Was that like an after effect or some shit? You know? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know." <laughs> It, 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 it's like I was watching some zombie mo uh, movie and someone uh, was shouting, it's a twitcher, it's a twitcher, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in any ca case, uh, and shortly before that, um, uh, Damien, uh, played by Sam Neill, um, he uh, told his Her Harvey Dean character, um, that um, the president was going to uh, to be asking him to be uh, become ambassador, and he was like, yeah. "How did you know that?" Uh, uh, you know. Yeah, which implies that Damien somehow uh, influenced uh, uh, telepathically that dog to hypnotize the present ambassador into killing himself so yeah Damien definitely knew what was going to happen and uh, <laughs> and I guess there is a reporter that is slightly pretty um, that uh, seems to be after his story um, I guess she uh, uh, she wor uh, works for um, world in focus. Uh, yeah, uh, Kate Reynolds played by Lisa Harrow. What do you think about her character? Ooh, she is uh, well, uh, pretty much a realistic character, I guess. Uh, especially in the books where we get to know a bit more about her thoughts, especially as she also appears uh, a bit in the fourth book. Uh, she is a journalist uh, very dedicated to her job, and uh, she happens to fall in love with Damien, who is... Uh, 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 who is uh, supposed to be a highly attractive man as these uh, devilish male characters in movies and shows usually are. <laughs> uh, and yeah, her reactions to what was happening around her were pretty much realistic for a person doing a job like hers who is also an atheist, as she mentions later on, but uh, yeah, there are moments when her atheism is uh, put to test, uh, and uh, uh, when she uh, starts to fight for the Christ side. <laughs> oh yeah, that, uh, that, uh, that comes into play uh, uh, la later. Um, but she also has a son, uh, which apparently she has. Uh, uh, she likes Damien Thorne uh, uh, enough to involve him in his life somewhat. Um, 
I guess the, uh, uh, they're on a really cool fox hunt where I guess he gets baptized by blood in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> yeah, apparently it's, it's some sort of uh, tradition for hunters, I think. I don't really know the details about it since I've never done anything like that. And to be honest, I don't want to. <laughs> Well, uh, not only that, but there's this cabal of priests. Uh, well, th uh, that's what IMDb call, uh, calls them, a cabal. A, a separate uh, a entity of uh, priests that uh, that have uh, uh, basically dedicated their lives to uh, uh, killing the Antichrist. Um, and uh, 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 they have a leader, and uh, I guess he is a father of some sort. Uh, father de Carlo, yeah. Yeah. Well, mm. uh, they try. Uh, they do several attempts at uh, trying to kill him, uh, but they end up having to um, wait uh, uh, until the Nazarene is reborn. Um. Which, what is the, the Nazarene in, in your words? <laughs> well, that's how Damien refers to Jesus Christ here. We don't get to know exactly why he chose uh, the word Nazarene. Like, he always uh, talks about him by using that word and no other one. Uh, okay, maybe sometimes he uses... Uh, uh, he, he does say Jesus Christ, but he prefers to say just Nazarene. And, uh, <laughs> actually, uh, uh, one thing they uh, did in a kind of strange way in this movie is that they imply the second coming of Christ will be like uh, a second birth, like uh, Christ will come to earth as a baby for the second time, which is not quite according to the Bible, and actually in this movie they do make up some things that uh, don't really exist in the Bible, or say that some quotes are from the book of Revelation when they are actually from other books, but uh, yeah, <laughs> and uh, uh, one st well, okay, now I almost mentioned something from the end. Again, I shouldn't uh, get uh, too much ahead of myself. But there are several scenes that, uh, that I like uh, uh, with Damien. Uh, oh, and, so and, do I. Um, there's uh, this moment where he is talking to a Nazarene statue, a, 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 a statue of Jesus Christ who has died on the cross, and he, he's... He's not. Uh, he's not in the normal condition. Normally, you, when you see him on the cross, his back is against the cross, and, and you see the nails. Well, this this particular statue is of him facing the cross, um, yeah. with his head of crowns like hanging over the backside of of this cross, and you see the nails like up. And it's like this really like cool carving because it's almost like you can see the uh, the veins of the uh, of this set, uh, said body of Christ, you know. Yeah, the statue was definitely very well made. Uh, this uh, speech that Damien delivers in that scene is one of my personal favorite parts of the movie. I will mentioned why and yeah the statue it's a uh, uh, i believe it's unique to this movie we don't get to see that anywhere else and it's described uh, rather well in the book uh, i have it here uh, it says uh, it was empty it means the room the room was empty except for a cross which stood in the middle of the room and dominated it nailed to it was a life-sized figure of christ the body wrapped around it in a perverse interpretation of the crucifixion the face and chest were pressed against the upright the legs were wrapped around it the arms were stretched out 
along the beam and nailed through the backs of the hands. He was naked. <laughs> so, the family jewels were probably showing. Anyways. <laughs> um, such was a prostration of the uh, 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 of the Christ for him, and when he uh, when, and I thought it was kind of interesting how he was calling him Nazarene while he had his body pressed up against the, uh, uh, him, uh, almost like in an erotic pose, uh, almost. Mm. almost. Yeah, and uh, like I said, I really liked his speech in that scene because while he the story is. Uh, uh, addressing the Nazarene directly, what he says could also be uh, taken as a symbolic, uh, as a symbolical criticism to the church and the religion system in our world. Because, uh, well, no offense to any religious people, if there is any religious person listening to us right now, but. I personally think, at least judging by what happens in my country, that uh, uh, religion uh, has a more negative than positive influence on the society, uh, mostly because, as Damien says in this scene, it uh, makes uh, people feel guilty for having some impulses which are actually just natural, which Damien put rather nicely here, where he says, uh, Nazarene, charlatan, what can you offer humanity? Since the hour you vomited forth from the gaping wound of a woman, you have done nothing but drown men's soaring desires in a deluge of sanctimonious morality. You have inflamed the pubertal mind of youth with your repellent dogma of original sin. Which, uh, like I said, I think uh, uh, I think that could be interpreted as a criticism to the religious system, which makes uh, people feel guilty for I don't know having uh, sexual desires, for having some negative emotions sometimes, for this and that, all the things that uh, the church uh, would call a sin, but that. Uh, it's actually a rather natural human impulse uh, oh, so, uh, so, oh. our biochemistry. so it's an, an impulse uh, to take your mother into the bedroom and like make love to her or some shit like that you know so uh, I guess that's something uh, wait uh, <laughs> no one did that here. <laughs> no no but uh, but uh, these are things that uh, the church would call sinful uh, I, I mean if you uh, if you had a sister and, and uh, you decided the better, uh, I mean that that would be uh, that would be an abomination in the eyes of God, supposedly. If, well, if, <laughs> if, 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 if one of your friends was married and you decided to have an affair with that uh, uh, significant other and uh, in a hotel somewhere. Uh, well, <laughs> Those things would be bad, of course, because they would involve causing harm to another person. But uh, the church would even call you a sinner for, I don't know, masturbating, for having sex before marriage, or things like that, that don't really True. cause harm things to that, uh, th Well, if a baby comes out of it, yeah, it would cause harm, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I don't think that God would strike me dead just for masturbating. Uh, that's, uh, I mean, although they say that masturbation is a sin, um, yeah, it does say in the Bible uh, to love thyself and love thy neighbor. These are the two uh, two commandments. That <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, the Bible nowhere directly says that masturbation is a sin, but... Uh, uh, this religious organization interpreted it uh, that way. I don't even know exactly sexuality. How I... Sexuality was definitely looked at differently at this uh, at this time period too. Mm. So, yeah. Although a funny thing you mentioned incest, uh, it was funny that you mentioned it because there is. Uh, 
quite there are quite several seeds of incest in the Bible. The most famous one being Lot and his daughters. And funnily enough, we never even see God uh, uh, criticize the uh, criticize Lot's daughters or punish them for what they did. <laughs> Well, yeah, that uh, that uh, that was why uh, why Sodom was gemoralized. You know, I mean, it was. It, it, <laughs> yeah, but that happened before the incest scene. True, but <laughs> uh, in any case. Uh, yeah, we got a bit off topic. <laughs> we often do, though. Um, it's it's not hard to get off topic, but uh, but especially when the uh, the topic is so uh, uh, so rough uh, <laughs> uh, uh, uh this uh, and the reason why i say rough uh, the father de carlo ends up coming to the newspaper reporter after you know after that uh, that uh priest was burned um uh, at her uh, news place uh um when she was having an interview with da uh, Damien, one of the priests, and uh, ended up uh, try uh, trying to kill him by uh, by going above in the rafters, and uh, and his yeah. leg got wrapped in a wire, and uh, uh, he ended up sw uh, swinging to and throw like a pendulum and right into mm -hmm. the fire, and yeah. it became yeah. a crispy critter. <laughs> Indeed. That interview is actually another one of my favorite scenes, uh, not because of what happens with the priest, but I really like one part of Damien's speech there. Although, if we look uh, deeper into his uh, actions throughout the movie, we can kind of see that he, what he said there was just a part of his own agenda, but still the... The quote he uh, gives there is uh, something I personally find very applicable uh, in real life. Uh, something that uh, really does apply to our world, if you don't mind me reading that quote too. No, uh, I don't mind at all. When Damien says, uh, I think the most important task I have is to help young people gain a more prominent role in world affairs than the one we currently afford them, or rather deny them. I mean, what is this arrogance that makes us think that we know better than them? We call them immature and naive. Wait till you've grown up and then we we'll listen to you. What we really mean is, wait till you've grown old, and then you'll think the way we do. And so youth stands aside because it has no other choice, and we set to work. We ply them with our values, we indoctrinate them with our mediocrity, until finally they emerge from their brainwashing education as so-called fully-fledged citizens. <coughs> clipped, clipped impotent and above all safe hmm. uh, i i found that a very thought-provoking quote and uh, very true in our world because uh, uh, people do say to young people like uh, 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 when uh, young people like teenagers uh, express their views on uh, some matter they are usually not taken seriously everyone is like uh, you think this way because you don't have enough life experience but then again if uh, teenagers really uh, did have some power to make a difference in the world that maybe uh, what they uh, the way they see things uh, could actually become reality if they were not uh, as oppressed by adults as they are so Although Damien may not have been entirely honest with what he said, but it's a quote that I deeply agree with. I think it is a very strong statement. Um, and uh, the thing about uh, Damien, especially as an ad ad adult, you have to think about, uh, about uh, the 
uh, the words that he was uh, saying. I mean, he was saying uh, that you know the youth were uh, were being brainwashed and uh, into you know being told uh, what was right and wrong, uh, wrong when these were things that uh, that his father, you know, uh, his spiritual father, the devil or whatever uh, uh, he uh, came uh, came from. Uh, yes. The um, society as it is today, uh, today it is brought up to be believe that certain things are sinful and certain things are wrong, whereas half of them are okay in the eyes of the devil. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, these are carnal delights and, and you know, uh, 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 sex with your mother, uh, uh, sex w uh, uh, w uh, with your neighbor, uh, uh, you know, these things are all okay. I mean, the, uh, uh, I mean, everything that you were taught uh, is okay is okay to do. I mean, you can go and kill whoever you want. I mean, uh, these are things uh, that these are things that I think uh, uh, that what the devil um, uh, wants. It, it, to take the beast that's inside you at you and release it you know i mean it's it's kind of a interesting conundrum because we're we're taught to sit up straight uh, you, you know uh mind yeah. your, your p's and q's say yes ma'am no ma'am yes sir no sir um how are you to do sir um May I go to the bathroom? You know, the, uh, these are things that we're to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, told instead of just taking what is ours. Uh, uh, instead of go, uh, going uh, going in and, and uh, like we saw in uh, Stigmata, uh, the devil uh, possessed the businessman and um, uh, had him walk right up to uh, to the man's wife and kiss her in, in uh. the cafeteria. I think that was uh, end of days, not stigmata. That's right, end of days. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In stories like this, uh, yeah, I guess that's what uh, the devil wants. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in real life, my philosophy has always been that uh, uh, you can do what you want as long as you're not uh, causing harm to anyone else. Or anything else. Uh, you mean like uh, animals? Yes. Oh, of, course. <laughs> uh, of course, animal cruelty is an, uh, is an absolute uh, no for me. And uh, funnily enough, even Anton LaVey, the founder of the Church of Satan, one of his uh, basic rules is uh, uh, don't uh, how did it, how did he word it uh, uh, do do not kill non-human animals unless you're doing it for food or in self-defense. So yeah, animal cruelty is strictly forbidden even in Satanism. Oh yeah, um, the thing is, I think that. Um, the devil is uh, definitely uh, a salesman. <laughs> he I see what you is did there. trying to show. Uh, I, I do think that, uh, that uh, especially in Hollywood, um, in films, uh, make him look very appetizing and the way that uh, that, uh, that he uh, supposedly wants dominion over the earth it doesn't sound too bad i mean it it, it really doesn't i mean to us i mean uh, <laughs> oh, every uh, time we watch something with the devil we, uh, we see like these orgy parties and uh, we're, we're thinking like to ourselves yeah that would be so great <laughs> yeah baby let's <laughs> Let's get it on. Let's go. Uh, let's go in the back room. Let's uh, let's do I, something. Give me a blowjob. Something. I wonder you know, if I mean, we are thinking of the same devil character right now. <laughs> I mean, 
Uh, to be honest, uh, some of that cult uh, stuff actually doesn't look too bad. I mean, okay, so we have to say uh, say a few uh, monotone things. Uh, say, oh, m my lord, ma uh, master, I shall serve you. But then it's all parties. You know, I mean, <laughs> it, it, it just it just seems like that. You know, I mean, it's very enticing. Uh, mm. uh, to, to say the least. I mean, okay, so uh, so we all have to act like each other. So what? But uh, <laughs> but if we uh, we can fuck anyone and any uh, anywhere anytime, I mean, what gives? Mm, well, I would still be concerned about uh, STDs, but uh, if that that wasn't. Uh, a problem that probably yeah well yeah i mean if there were, there were no stds in this world and that's one thing that the devil was promising i'm not sure i would entirely believe him because we've all been told that he's the father of lies so if he says oh go ahead have sex with that woman they could have stds and you don't even know it so yeah well we STDs were eradicated completely. That would make uh, that would make sex a lot safer. That much is true. <laughs> yeah, well, in this day and age, the, even if the government found a cure for STDs, uh, they, uh, uh, they probably wouldn't even tell us. <laughs> probably. But uh, in any case, so um, we do have this relationship between. Um, the newspaper reporter's uh, son and uh, um, uh, Damien, uh, which apparently he's kind of become his number one person because, uh, because while the priest, uh, the Carlo, is showing uh, his mother all the, uh, all this information, he finds the address. Uh, uh, the address, and the, uh, the address just so happens to be. Um, his right hand man, uh, man's wife's place, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah. He uh, the priest visits both uh, Kate Reynolds, the reporter, and uh, Harvey Dean's wife. Yeah. So, um, uh, when uh, Harvey Dean uh, uh, comes uh, uh, comes in, he's like, "Well, um, uh, you're." Your baby, uh, well, I, I want you to kill it. Um, uh, can you do that for me? Uh, beca uh, beca uh, because if you want to show your allegiance to me, this uh, this is what you do. Uh, uh, it, it, was, uh, it was Damien who wanted that done, not Harvey. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I know. That's what I'm uh, talking about. Harvey Dean came uh, to Damien. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Damien, uh, uh, Damien was like, well, Isaac, uh, uh, Isaac, uh, when he was told to kill his son uh, in the name of the Lord, uh, uh, that's what he did. So um, if you show me that you can kill your son, uh, yeah, you can earn your rightful place. You know, I mean, this is just this is, a, this is how it's done. I mean. Uh, yeah. If you do this uh, th this thing for me, um, I won't die, and you won't die, and everything will be kosher, you know. Mm. Yeah, Damien kind of shamelessly put himself in the position of God in that scene. Oh yeah. Although, yeah, it was uh, also kind of uh, true that they were well. Of course, what they were doing was wrong, but yeah, they were fighting for their survival, literally. Well, and uh, you've got all these priests that are after him too, and and uh, I guess uh, two of the uh, uh, two of them uh, ended up uh, being trapped in the ground um, uh, after they had killed one of their other priests. Uh, thinking that it was, uh, thinking that it was Damien because because uh, he thought he saw mm. uh, saw him, uh, so I guess we know that he plays some kind of trickery. Uh, yeah, that was a very vague scene. I think it was a bit uh, confusing, even in the book. Not sure if I can 
fight it is and without uh, uh but yeah it was like uh uh, it, it was implied that Damien somehow switched places with the priest right before they were about yes. to start stabbing him. If I understood correctly, it was a bit of a strange scene. I'm... Oh, I think I found it. Uh... uh Uh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it was like it was a really weird sequence. A uh, sequence because you had the one pr uh, pr uh, priest uh, say uh, saying that Damien wasn't far behind him, and they were like, okay, and then they uh, they meet up with uh, him. And one guy ends up seeing what he thought was Damien. And uh, that's when he came forward and stabbed him. And so did the other guy. And then uh, the other guy was like, hey, let's stop and take a look at this uh, 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 this fuckhead, you know? Um, <laughs> uh, 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 just to see if he is who, he, uh, uh, who we thought he was. And when they look, uh, look it's... It's their damn priest friend. So, uh, uh, so it's like, oh, we killed the wrong person. So, uh, so they uh, they ran and ran into a hole, and uh, they didn't realize that this hole had a door or a, ga or a gated, like, trap door, Ooh, and they were trapped. Like that. <laughs> and then yeah. the other two... The other two went, uh, came at him on either side of a bridge uh, during the fox hunt. Oh, yeah, that was uh, that was an intense uh, kill as well. <laughs> uh, and it looks like the original fox was killed for some reason. I don't know how. Uh, yeah, I actually found that part about the foxes a bit confusing. I'm not exactly sure how exactly the foxes came into play, but I guess they were somehow using them to trap Damien so that uh, he couldn't escape when they both uh, come after him. Yeah, so... I must say I wasn't happy to see a dead fox on screen, although I guess they didn't really kill one for the movie. I hope they didn't. I I did think it was uh, uh, kind of funny how the terrier like scared uh, scared the fox and uh, out, out into the open. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why uh, why I found that funny, but I thought that was kind of cute. Well. Dogs do tend to be cute. <laughs> but, uh, in any case, and I guess that's when it was left up to Doc, uh, Father DiCarlo to show his evidence that he had. And also, he came to her one more time, uh, the newspaper uh, reporter, about how his uh, her son is in league with Damien and how he's kind of a follower of his and how uh, how she should be fighting for his soul mm. and yeah. he, he basically mentioned that uh, he, he hasn't been at school why don't you look into that and I think that she did and that's kind of what turned her but that is either at, I think that's after she actually goes to him, and he basically anal rapes her. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> and she finds him, like, curled up in a ball on the floor of that 
altar that he had uh, has the setup with that prostrate Christ statue. <laughs> yeah, and that's when she sees uh, uh, she uh, looks under his hair and finds uh, his six 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 birthmark. Yep, and also um, it uh, sometime before this. Um, if I remember correctly, uh, there's an astrologist uh, and his team of astrologists that have found that uh, out that there are these stars that are going to align uh, with a specific day, and it just so happens to be March twenty fourth, which uh, which is funnily enough my birthday. <laughs> uh oh. It, yeah, Are you I the find... Christ child? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I found that one hell of an irony, I must say, since I like all this, this uh, devilish fiction. And then uh, it turns out when I saw this movie for the first time, and uh, it turns out uh, that the, the supposed de the date when Christ was supposedly reborn is uh, my birthday, although 10 years before I was born. Yeah, I couldn't believe that they did that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, Anyways, <laughs> so March 24th, so you're the one they were looking for. I'm sorry, what did you say? So you were the Nazarene. <laughs> the one that they were looking for, the one that they saved fr uh, from Damien. Anyways. <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, um, so she finds that out. Um Oh, um, that's right. Uh, because these astrologers have found these stars align, when the alignment happens, it affects Damien uh, during the night. Uh, he is affected by, uh, by this alignment. And he, uh, he felt the birth of Christ happen. Or, yes. the, or at least this rebirth of Christ. The second coming of Christ. Which is supposedly something. Uh, uh, see, the second coming is mentioned in the Bible. It's just not uh, not, uh, not mentioned any fur uh, further than the fact that he's coming back. We don't know when. We don't know where. We don't even know if he's going to be born again. All we know is that he's supposed Ooh. to come back. Yeah, I actually think, according to the Bible, he's not supposed to come back as a child um, at the end of that's, this movie it's, that's, uh, it doesn't say whether he's supposed to come back as a child or not it just says he's going to come back that's it yes, there's nothing sir. beyond that <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, um, uh, by the end I mean, of this you you can you can research it to find out if I, if that's what i'm saying is true but I'm pretty sure and pretty definite sure that uh, that his coming is foretold, just not uh, when, where, why, or how. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mystery about wh uh, when his second coming is supposed to happen. It could happen many years in the future, or it could happen tomorrow. I don't know, but... <laughs> Yeah, actually, I think, uh, well, I'm not sure that could be a translation issue, so uh, take my words with a pinch of salt here, but uh, uh, in the Bible, in the Gospels, I think Jesus actually says uh, that his second coming would uh, happen uh, uh, during that generation's life, uh, like, which I thought meant while well, his apostles and people he knew during his time on earth uh, were alive. And since it didn't happen by then, it, 
it's actually probably not happening at all, but I guess people found some, a way to... Some believe it's going to happen during the seven years of tribulation. Uh, yeah, I guess they somehow uh, found a way to interpret this word generation like it wasn't referring to uh, that particular generation living at that time, but like... Uh, all like that all uh, people who ever uh, worship Christ back then and in the future like they are all part of that generation supposedly that uh, Jesus mentioned but well, yeah if... basically uh, this birth of the new Christ uh, it has scared Damien so much that he tells his all of his followers uh, to hunt this Christ child down or else I will kill you basically and that's basically what he was tell, uh, telling them uh, you, you uh, he, he basically told them to kill it uh, kill, uh, kill him or he will die and so will they didn't say that he would kill them from what I understood but yeah if no but they, they, would, they, would, they would they would they would perish nonetheless yeah 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 <laughs> He um, would die, and so would the, uh, they, basically. It, yeah, and it was because after the uh, supposed baby was born, uh, Damien started to physically lose his strength, which was mentioned a few times throughout the movie. So, uh, yeah, I guess it's a somewhat interesting uh, philosophical matter, like... Uh, uh, of course, uh, oops, uh, if, if anyone was asked, uh, is it okay to kill a baby for your own survival, everyone would say no, it's never okay to kill a baby. And but you could then, see, you could see all of his followers uh, were like nurses, doctors, uh, uh, lawyers, the, uh, these were like a ton of people, you know? Yeah, even children. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you, uh, when you saw the nurse go uh, uh, go in and take the air uh, uh, air out of the machine of this baby, that uh, that that was, and then of course the the children show up like uh, like they're uh, they're from Boy Scouts. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, I think if I remember correctly, some of them are even mentioned in the fourth book. I know the nurse is mentioned, not sure about the others anymore, it's been a I while. Think, uh, see, I think the most disturbing thing about uh, the fil uh, film is the Char Baby. Uh, yeah, although when the baby appeared charred, that was just a hallucination. The baby was actually still alive. I know, but still. Mm. I, 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 that was a... Uh, and that was a char baby. I mean, that was <laughs> that was a totally that was an ash baby. Yeah, and it was still even moving like some zombie baby or something. Yeah, like that that was real eerie. I mean, that 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 was the most disturbing part of this film. I mean, I don't know why, but that might actually be my favorite scene. <laughs> I do see why, and the fact that she. Uh, she Walked all the way around around uh, the uh, the kitchen and the living uh, room. That extension cord must have been long as fuck because she brought that cord. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, an interesting <laughs> thing you noticed. I saw that the movie four or five times, and I didn't notice that until you pointed it out. <laughs> <laughs> but in, in any case. Uh, now all these babies have been uh, been, uh, been ki uh, killed, uh, and uh, that's another thing of note. Uh, uh, the uh, father De Carlo ha has all this paperwork on all the children that have been ki uh, uh, killed. Um, the births were exactly on m uh, or around March twenty fourth. Uh, yes, actually, they were. Uh, it was said that uh, 
uh, all those babies were born on March 24th between midnight and 6 a.m. And then there was uh, this uh, son of Harvey Dean and his wife uh, who was said to be born actually before midnight. So technically March 23, but... Uh, they supposedly got rid of all the other babies, so Damien was convinced that the Christ child must be uh, Harvey Dean, son of all of them. But and it wasn't. No, no, it wasn't. Uh, in, in the movie, at the end, it was implied that uh, Christ did come back, but not as a child, but I guess in his... Uh, 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 regular spiritual form, or I don't know, while uh, the book had a different uh, explanation, a rather interesting one. In the, book, is... it, uh, in the book it was said that uh, the birth of the Christ child was never legally registered because the child was born in some tribe, I think it said the gypsy tribe, I'm not sure if I remember that correctly, hmm. uh, maybe not, oh, oh yeah, yeah, uh, I, funnily enough, I just opened it uh, on that page when Father De Carlo says, then we went looking for him, it was simple, uh, the astronomer gave us the exact location of his birth and we found him among the gypsies. <laughs> so, yeah, that was why Damien and his disciples couldn't hunt him down because uh, he, his existence wasn't registered. Hmm. Okay. So, regardless, he wasn't going to find him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, in any case, um, what did you think about that ending there? Uh, 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 now, uh, now that you've seen it again. Well, the first time I disliked it because the first time I failed to pay attention to uh, some other things Damien did, and uh, that first time I somewhat misinterpreted him as a character completely. I thought that Damien was uh, basically by trying to hunt Christ down, that his ultimate goal was to make it possible for all souls to go to heaven, regardless whether they worshipped God or not. Uh, I figured that out from his quote when he is talking to the Christ statue and he says, let me find that. Uh, he says, and now you resolved on denying them ultimate joy beyond death by destroying me. So, like I said, I interpreted that as if he wanted to, uh, if he wanted to make it possible for all souls to go to heaven even without uh, worshiping God or living by His rules, which I thought wasn't a bad thing to fight for, but. At that time, I failed to pay attention to the fact that Damien's uh, definition of heaven is not really a, a, an idyllic world, but a world full of pain and violence. As he said uh, a few times throughout the movie, he said something like, uh, uh, birth is pain, death is pain, joy is pain, something. Something like that, I can't find that quote now, but basically what I failed to notice the first time was that his definition of heaven is, uh, uh, is a world that normal people would not really be happy to live in. So, yeah. No, it would probably be more on the uh, S&M side of things. Uh, it would probably be a little bit like uh, Hellraiser. <laughs> yeah, but one thing I do want to say about the ending is what I mentioned at the beginning, why I do think this movie, in spite of being called The Final Conflict, did need a sequel, is because uh, in the first movie it was said that if the Antichrist is killed with 
only one sword, one, one dagger that extinguishes his physical life that he would come back, that he has to be killed on a hallowed ground and with all the seven daggers uh, uh, arranged in the shape of a cross. It was said the first one has to be, has to go through his chest, if I remember correctly, and it extinguishes physical life and the other six have to go around it in the shape of a cross and they extinguish the spiritual life. And in this movie, Damien was, uh, they completely neglected what was said in the first movie. Every priest was given one dagger. And they didn't even try to keep them all in one place. And Damien got in po possession of six of them, which if you take the first movie into account, it kind of makes it obvious that uh, this movie cannot really be the end of the Antichrist. And when he is uh, killed with only one dagger in, in the end, he even says, Nazarene, you have won nothing. So it is, uh, it is an implication that he uh, might be back in the future, back uh, uh, later on in the sequel. Uh, which I would, many people hate that movie and while I somewhat do see why there are also some things that I like about it but we will get into that uh, when we discuss that one uh, definitely so yeah I guess this was a decent ending for Damien after some things he did and what he was trying to do after all it was a fitting ending to have him killed <laughs> but mm -hmm. yeah it, it was uh, kind of implied that it's not really the end of him so we will get more into that when we discuss the fourth movie yep definitely which i'm not sure if i've seen Oh, we'll have to, we'll have to uh, get to that point. Um, but any case, uh, let's uh, look at our favorite scenes. I've already said mine. What is your favorite scene? If you had a favorite. Uh, yeah, I already said mine too. My favorite scenes would definitely be uh, this when Damien has his speeches, but I think why. If I had to choose only one, it would be the one he gave during the interview about uh, uh, about uh, young people being oppressed by the adults. I like that quote a lot. That would probably be my favorite to see. Although another quote of his that I found quite interesting was near the end when he was... Uh, talking to the statue of Christ again, at least I think the statue was there, when he said, you think you won, do you? You watched me slay a hundred children in your place and never lifted a finger to save them. Suffer little children to come unto me, your words, Nazarene, not mine. I find that scene very interesting because Although what he says about this biblical quote is wrong, uh, suffer little children to come unto me, it uh, makes it sound like Jesus said that uh, children should suffer in order to come to him, which Jesus didn't actually say in the Bible, because this quote is from... Uh, uh, from uh, 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 an old translation of the Bible, it's... Uh, uh, it's an older English where suffer actually didn't mean what it means today, but it meant uh, permit. So what Jesus actually said was uh, permit the little children to come unto me. And here Damien kind of twists it to make it sound like Jesus said that children should suffer. Although still what he says uh, uh, does somewhat make sense when he says you watched me slay a hundred children in your place and never lifted a finger to save them, which uh, uh, could also be interpreted as a criticism to religion because 
there are many people who uh, believe in God and they see all sorts of atrocities and injustices happening in this world, including children coming down with cancer and dying. And while some of them may wonder why God does nothing to save them, uh, not many of them will actually stop believing in, in God or uh, start questioning whether God is really as good as people think he is. And uh, Damien uh, points it out pretty well here, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I, th uh, th I think so. And, and uh, I will have to say that uh, I thought that the suicide of the politician uh, uh, was uh, was definitely violent. Um, the burning of that pri uh, priest that was a little bit violent, um, a little bit, um, not m uh, uh, much, but uh, apparently it was one of the more uh, most violent uh, scenes uh, on uh, on mainstream films uh, 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 in its in its heyday. Uh, yeah. So uh, the only um, serious, uh, yes. It, well, that's what it, it said on Wikipedia. I mean, it, it mentioned that scene as being like one of the more violent scenes, um, at, at least of anything that was be, uh, being shown in the mainstream at the time. Uh, yeah, the Omen series definitely likes to rely on bizarre over the top deaths. Like in the first one, we had uh, uh, one guy. Uh, get killed in a freak accident when a sheet of glass falls down and cut his head off or when uh, this woman first gets thrown off the balcony then gets uh, thrown out through the window at the hospital and the uh, nanny who hangs herself and dumps down and her body smashes a window or in mm -hmm. the second one uh, uh, the elevator scene when this uh, cord falls down and cuts a man in half. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this scenes in this one that you mentioned. Yeah, there there's a lot of uh, freaky deaths in these movies that uh, are one of the things that make this series very unique. Well. And I think this is the first time we get an anal, an anal rape in the whole thing, so. Um, indeed, yeah. Okay, now that you mentioned it, uh, I could uh, kind of, uh, uh, I would kind of prefer if they hadn't uh, done it that way because I don't like rape, uh, to be honest. Uh, that scene would have actually worked pretty much the same, even if she, even if Kate hadn't asked him to stop, if she had uh, just let him continue without trying to stop him, the scene would have still played out the same without making Damien look like a rapist. Uh, so yeah, I wish they had uh, omitted that detail. They that would probably be my one issue with this movie okay well i think we've covered everything except for music but the music oh. was pretty much the same wasn't it oh uh, more or less yeah although i think jerry bolts it was making the uh, you uh, making the soundtrack uh, again uh, for every Omen movie. Like he made one for the first one, and the second, and the third. Are I think they are all similar but not identical. The uh, the lyrics of this Ave Satani song, yeah, they are the same all the time. But the uh, the instrumentals are probably not the same, but. Uh, I think it, uh, if I remember correctly what I read once, I think in the fourth movie, Jerry Goldsmith didn't make a soundtrack, but they put one together from what he did before. So it's uh, 
uh, uh, so that music is still there and it doesn't sound like anything is missing in that regard but yeah okay well other than that i think that's all the time that we have for today folks so thank you for listening to our mm -hmm. omen 3 discussion and hopefully you enjoyed uh, 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 our uh, journey through this film. In any case, uh, yeah. next week, thank you all. I, uh, I think we will be uh, do do the film Bedazzled. Ooh, very nice. Um, uh, and there are two versions of that, so, uh, so we will be doing the original one first. <laughs> This is the film that I thought uh, uh, was the, the Devil and Daniel Webster uh, at for, uh, first, uh, and I realized it was not the film that I was looking for. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, in any case, like, share, and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next week. Yeah, and if you're afraid of getting attacked by the Antichrist, uh, keep a dagger like this somewhere around for self-defense. <laughs> <laughs> oh, makes, no, uh, makes you wonder what else he's got. <laughs> Although this uh, dagger I have, it maybe does look a tiny bit like the one from the Omen, but it's not really identical. It has these uh, uh, serpent carvings on it. Uh, and ah. the, the, the one in the oven, it may not be very visible on screen, but in the books it's described that uh, uh, there is a, a figure of uh, Christ carved into the hilt of each dagger. In the, in the position he is usually on the cross. Oh, wow! Very nice. Ooh, cool. What is that a movie prop or something? I picked it up for like 60 bucks or so, uh, something like that. It, it's still uh, kind of cool. Ooh. <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> but, uh, in any case, uh, yeah, that that kind of surprised you, me bringing it out. <laughs> yeah. But, I, I in any case, let, gentlemen, don't there. be scared. Don't be scared that we have a couple of blades. In any case, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, see you next week. See you. Thank you for listening.